Hey there everybody, today's video is going to be all about creating pixel art backgrounds. I wanted to go through a few tips that will help you create better backgrounds for your video game art, for your animations, for your static pixel art, whatever it is you have in mind. These tips that I'm going to give you today will hopefully come in use. So let's get started. The first tip that I want to give you is to really consider the mood of your background. What kind of vibe are you trying to get across? Do you want to create something that is going to be daylight and therefore perhaps quite bright in tone? Or are you wanting to create something a little bit more moody? Thinking about how you're going to create your background will inform your palette choices. And if you're thinking of this to begin with, you're going to find that when you create your palette as you work on your picture, it's actually going to start looking much more consistent and actually convey the vibe that you want to get across. Often if you're not really thinking of your mood for your picture and so forth, it's going to lead to a slightly confused aesthetic, so really definitely consider the mood of what you're going for. Mood can be conveyed through the value or the luminance of the colours that you choose. So if you're going for a slightly more darker aesthetic, say as say featured in Super Metroid, or perhaps a lighter vibe as perhaps say featured in Rayman for example, just make sure you keep things consistent because this is just going to help you choose your colours and make sure that everything all fits together. I highly recommend that you roughly sketch out your background before you actually begin actually putting down specific pixels. It's not always necessary, some people find it easy just to get straight on with painting on the background, but I tend to find that if I want to give my pictures a little bit more structure, uh, particularly if they're sort of like an urban scene as you see here with Narima in Japan, but this can still apply even if you're creating something that's a much more organic background. You know, there's nothing to say that you have to draw with straight lines. You can use your vertical line tool to be quite freehand with. And this is something that I did actually do for this particular sketch. So with the trees, for example, I just did very, very short brush strokes just to sort of get the kind of idea of the looseness of the trees and their foliage and so forth. But you could also use the freehand tool. But just because you're using the line tool doesn't mean that everything has to be a perfect angle, a perfectly straight line. So sketching out will help. Again, I'm using different pen colours, something that I often do when I'm creating character portraits, which I discussed in my last video. But I do it for backgrounds because, again, it allows me to separate out the key elements, to see them sort of against, so that I can see where the houses in this example is against the trees, against the road, and so forth. So it can help. It's not just purely for when I'm using stencils, as I do in Dirk's Paint on my Amiga, for example. It just allows things to stand out a little bit because you're going to be painting over the top of this anyway. Another tip that I can give you if you're starting out and perhaps maybe you're working from a photograph to give you the inspiration for whatever it is that you're creating is perhaps on a modern system such as you know Macintosh, PC, Linux, whatever you might use, is to take your photograph and just give it a very slight Gaussian blur. Um, the reason I say this is because what it will do is actually smudge some of the finer details. Now this may seem slightly strange, but if you just bear with me, what this is going to allow you to do is actually just see the form and the shape of what it is that you're creating, rather than minute detail, because it's very easy when you're first starting out with pixel art to try and replicate that level of detail. But actually what you want to do first when you're creating these backgrounds is to just get the form and the shape of things in the right ballpark and then you can start adding your detail in. If you do the detail once you've actually got your colour, form and so forth all beginning to come together, you'll find that the detail becomes much more natural and actually looks much better in your pixel art. It's just so easy to get hung up on specific details when you're first drawing your backgrounds. Really all you want to do is just get the overall shape and the overall colour and tone of your background correct first and then start putting that detail in. It's something that's going to come to you the more that you practice and actually create your pixel art backgrounds. So for this background I wanted to emulate the sort of traditional style of using watercolours for uh, backgrounds used in anime for example. Um, so this meant that I was using sort of more pastel tones but also something that works really well for background art is a lifted black point. This is a term that you tend to use more perhaps in photography where uh, instead of having your blacks actually being pure black, you raise the curve in the histogram or in the curve tool in Photoshop to be just above true black. And what this does is it gives the picture a slightly matte appearance. 
Um, essentially, it means that your colours tend to never have the red, green or blue channel set to zero at any point. So that way it gets this sort of slightly matte tone because when you place your characters on the top of this, they'll be using sort of a greater deal of saturation, higher contrast, essentially more punchy colours that are going to stand out um, against the background. So this is quite a useful technique and um, it allowed me to sort of roughly emulate the look of that, uh, those classic anime backgrounds that you might have had in Lama One Half, which is what I'm working on here. It's a background uh, based on um, the Lincoln High School. And um, yeah, so that's kind of what I was going for here. The key thing about creating background art, uh, particularly with pixel art, is that um, don't be dispirited when you first start because when you first start sketching out the background or beginning to lay down your colour, it's going to look pretty poor, um, if I'm honest. Um, my experience has always been that when I first start doing a piece of background art, I really honestly question whether it's actually ever going to come together. But all I can say to you is that pixel art is not a fast process, it's a very slow process, it's a slightly meditative process I guess, you'll become very absorbed and at one with what you're creating. It's no different really to using Photoshop or Sketchbook or Corel Painter or something like that I guess. Uh, but with pixel art it's a much more um, slow process. So. Expect to be working on your backgrounds for quite some time, particularly of uh, the style of which I'm sort of creating here in the background. So don't get disheartened when, you know, like you're an hour, maybe two hours into your creating your background and you still can't quite see whether it's actually going to come together. And of course, obviously here I'm drawing trees, so getting that very naturalistic sort of feel to them is is, is very hard to do when you're first starting out with pixel art and that's why I recommended perhaps blurring some photos and just looking at the way that the tone comes through, the shape, the form of things, where the light is landing and that will help you work out how to lay down the colour. Um, because with trees what you're going to have is you can have the light hitting uh, different points of the trees so at the top generally the tones are going to be lighter and therefore that's because the light is hidden but underneath the tree canopy it's going to be much darker but not necessarily black you can use um, sort of um, blue green tones or maybe some darker purple tones but black um, I tend to not use a great deal when I'm sort of creating sort of trees and so forth but a lifted black point is going to really help you uh, place your characters on the top because the contrast will look really great and it will almost see, seem as if your characters are set again that backdrop creating sort of a sense of dimension and uh, depth to your creations by the way my patreon supporters which you can also join from just five dollars a month uh, we'll have a little video which it goes into uh, why I wanted to create this particular background and the characters that sit on top of it and uh, it reaches back into sort of all my history of why I loved creating graphics on the computer so if you're interested in that pop along to Patreon the links are in the description and you can find out a bit more about my uh, processes and reasoning for creating this. But back on topic, if you want to find out a little bit more about uh, this background in particular, I've restrained it to just 16 colours. Now, I talk a bit more about this in my previous instruction video, which was tips for better pixel art. In that video, I uh, explained uh, about palette management and how you can manage your colours a lot better, particularly on retro systems, which have particular limitations on where and how much colour you can use. So do check out that video. Uh, the link will be in the top right hand corner now. So one other little short tip, which is more about the camera characters which I just want to mention here is that when I draw my characters particularly on a system that doesn't support alpha transparency such as the Amiga which I'm drawing this on here I'll always ensure that the outline of the character is left as black or a dark colour because if you start anti-aliasing the outside of your character you're going to have to manage the tones which blend against the background for each frame particularly if you're animating it's not so much a biggie if it's just a still frame you can anti-alias that outline and there are no issues there but just be aware that if if you have character movement, as those anti-alias colours move across the background with its shifts in tone, for example maybe you've used a lighter tone to soften the edge, if that character moves over a darker part of the background, that lighter tone is then going to be showing quite sharp relief against that darker background. So just be aware that generally on systems that don't support transparency, you don't want to be anti-aliasing the outside of your characters. 
Another tip that I want to give you is use divering. Divering is basically a process of using say a checkerboard pattern where you create a new colour from just pairing together two colours and uh, with a checkerboard pattern or other similar patterns you can give the appearance of there being more colours on the screen than there actually are. This is a really effective technique for uh, creating new tones where you're limited with the amount of colour you may be able to display on screen at once, but it can also be used to effect sort of like a transparency effect. Uh, this was actually used quite extensively in games like Cast of Illusion on the Mega Drive, um, where the checkerboard pattern basically was a single tone, but the pixels in between on the checkerboard were actually the transparent colour, so in effect you could see uh, Mickey Mouse almost as if the character was behind what you're actually sort of moving through so this is a really effective technique it looked really great on CRTs that we had back in the 80s and 90s and of course some of us still do with our systems um, but I still think that even if you're using like an LCD or some kind of television to play your games on these days it's very much a signature thing of pixel art is to see differing so don't be afraid to use that I really highly recommend that you learn how to create these little patterns with mixing the colors together because it's a super effective technique that's really going to end elevate your pixel art. I've used it quite extensively in this background for example under a tree canopy or just to give the uh, hint of where the leaf foliage on the surface of the tree is just breaking up and you can see the shadows underneath. It's a really great way of bringing texture and detail into your background so definitely use Divering. Don't just use solid blocks of colour because it really can elevate your background art from just being sort of like clear blocks of colour into something that looks almost painterly in appearance. In terms of whether I use the line tool or the freehand tool when creating background art, well it all depends on what I'm actually doing. I still tend to mostly use the line tool because there's nothing to stop me using the sort of short strokes of the line tool in a very expressive way to build in the detail. However, sometimes when laying down blocks of colour, I will use the freehand tool. Sometimes when using an older system like my Amiga 600, which basically is stock apart from some extra RAM, sometimes their freehand strokes on the higher colour screens can be a little bit slow. Um, so there are some limitations to that, but with a smaller brush size, it zips around absolutely fine. I can paint and lay down colour as quick as I like. But it does tend to be the case that once I've actually got the main bulk of the background in, I will start using that line tool and a single pixel brush. But there are no hard and fast rules in this. I've seen some people who basically just lay down colour with freehand tools. And this does tend to be easier on modern systems where you might have a, a better quality of mouse or maybe even a graphics tablet if you're using something like A-Sprite or Photoshop. This does tend to work quite well actually on those systems. But when I'm using the older systems, I do tend to say use the line tool in the space to my Amiga. It just works for me better, but you're just going to have to experiment with it. There is no right or wrong way with it. So, Another really cool trick is that you can use hue rotation or changing your saturation to actually affect a different mood to your scene. That's the beauty of index colour which pixel art often brings with it. So for example here I've created a city scene of Narima at night and I've given it a somewhat warm glow with like purple and orange tones and so forth because that's what I wanted to convey, a sense of warmth. However, it wouldn't actually take a great deal because I've used a very specific range of colours that I've not gone and used every single swatch of my palette to create this background to just rotate the hue towards slightly colder tones. So if I wanted to go for a more Blade Runner or sort of synthwave style approach with that 80s neon, I could quite easily rotate the hues and some of these tones around to a more cyan greenish sort of tone and then maybe bring some of the warmer colours to a more sort of uh, fuchsia or magenta style tone. It's very easy to do with index colour so it's a way of actually being able to use your backgrounds that you've created in more than one setting to convey a different vibe. Of course obviously turning a daylight picture into nighttime may not be always entirely feasible or indeed vice versa a nighttime scene into daylight is not always the best way to do it but certainly to change the lighting say for example that is something that's definitely possible with this technique. So some of you may be interested to see what this artwork looks like now that it's completed. So the three backgrounds that I have drawn that you've seen in this video, you're going to see them now. Afterwards, you'll see a speed draw of Narima City, which is the night scene that you've been looking at throughout this video, and I hope you enjoy that.
I just want to give a massive thank you to my four Patreons. They are Just 80, 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast, Phil Cobbley and Anthony Jarvis. So thank you so much guys for your continued support. It really means a lot to me. And if any of you would like to support me on Patreon, please follow the link in the description below. So I guess that just about wraps up this video. I do hope you've enjoyed it. And I guess that all remains for me to say is see you soon. Peace.